And on the phone with us is uh, Chris Brooks from uh, Kiwi Band Like a Storm, who are currently up in Chicago. What's what's happening up in Chicago for you at the moment, Chris? Hey, man, so we, um, we're just getting ready to head out on the next tour, but we had a couple of weeks off, so we figured we'd come here and uh, record an acoustic EP, some of the versions of, of the rock songs from Awake in the Fire, and uh, shoot a music video for Become the Enemy, and uh, maybe even rehearse. A little bit before the next tour. Maybe, maybe even rehearse. So, uh, <laughs> exactly, man. That, that's a luxury these days. <laughs> so Awaken the Fire is obviously the new record, but you're already recording a, uh, what's this going to be, like a bonus disc at some point, this acoustic version of the album that you've got going on? Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, you know, whenever you go into radio stations, you have to play acoustic, you know. It's, uh, it's much easier to take into acoustic guitars than like an entire band's worth of gear and cram them in a studio. So I don't know. I mean, it's it's just a fun thing for us to do and just sort of like reimagine the songs kind of a different way. So we just figured, you know, we had two weeks off tour and uh, why the hell not do that? Yeah, man. And in terms of, uh, is it going to be all songs from Awake in the Fire? Because, of course, you guys are reasonably well known for doing Gangster's Paradise as a cover, the old Coolio song. Are you ripping out anything, anything special that we should look out for? Well, we'll, we'll be putting that one on. We've got a, uh, you know, we took, we were a gangster rock band, but now we're going to do an a gangster acoustic version. So what could be more badass than that? <laughs> it's pretty badass, man. Pretty badass. <laughs> um, your new single too that you, you're shooting the video for. What's the concept behind the video, and how much input have you got, or is this all down to record companies and stuff? Nah, man. Now we've got a ton of input. So we're just going through different concepts at the moment. But we've got, you know, a few friends up here who we've met over the last years of different different bands and that kind of thing so we're just going through a bunch of different concepts but it's going to be awesome man yeah we're really excited about it and uh, in terms of touring you guys are touring extensively i'm following you on facebook yeah. and on twitter and things and you guys are really really busy um some of the highlights of these tours that you've been doing because you've been touring with some really big names for a long time uh, and it's yeah. just building and building and building for you yeah man it's incredible i mean we've been like so lucky to tour with so many huge bands, Alter Bridge, Shinedown, Puddle of Mud, Drowning Pool, Hell Yeah, Slash, you know, like, the list goes on, and it's incredible. But um, we just toured Europe for the first time earlier this year, and then we're, we just went back again last month. So we've been twice there this year, and, and in between we did the Hell Yeah Tour and the Slash Tour, and um, and now we're about to head out with Three Days Grace. So it's, uh, it's pretty crazy, man. It's really exciting. Yeah, man, that is really crazy. I remember opening my Metal Hammer magazine and seeing a live review of you guys in there, and then, like, I think an issue or two later, seeing an album review of you guys in Metal Hammer. I mean, for me, that's always been the, the Bible of hard and heavy music. Uh, how massive was that for you guys to, to, to make a publication like that? Like, it was huge, man. I mean, you know, you never really know. I think you've always got that um, in the back of your mind, the thought that you'll get slammed by these magazines that you love. You know, it'll be the worst of feeling in the world, but we couldn't believe it. They're really, really cool, um, you know, and, and I mean, it's incredible getting that support from a magazine we've been reading the entire time, you know? Yeah, man, it's uh, it was crazy good. I, I remember looking at that and thinking, oh, jealous just a little bit, man, just a little bit. That was uh, happy for you guys, but uh, yeah, absolutely stoked uh, to, to see oh, you guys there you, representing, man. you know, New Zealand uh, hard and heavy music at, at that level. Uh, in terms of um, touring Europe versus touring the States, what were the main differences you found other than having to have your passport handy more often than not? <laughs> you know, well, now it's the EU, it's actually not too bad because you can travel within all these countries, you know, without a passport. So it, it was cool. Touring Europe was really cool because, you know, in the States, you might drive six hours, eight hours between shows, and, and you might be in a different state. But there you're in a totally different country, and they have a different language, and they have, you know, like a totally different architecture and all these kind of things. So it was cool just to, you know, I mean, we were on the bus. We were touring with Tremonti, you know, from Alterbridge, and so we were on the bus with those guys, which was awesome. You'd wake up in the, in the new city. And you'd get a couple of hours to walk around and, and just see what was going on and, like, you know, try the local beer, try the local food, and then go to sound check. So, you know, that was that was really, really cool, I think, just the culture part of it. And then also the the fans are, are really passionate over there. You know, we'd show up to the venue and we'd see people already lining up. And, I mean, we're there hours early to sound check. And so to have people already at the venue, you know, was, was just incredible. And then, um, you know, we did download and we did grass pop and they were two just massive massive metal festivals and it's it's cool i mean we've done a lot of festivals here but to have one 
you know, grass pop, but, you know, you got Motorhead playing, you got Faith No More playing, you got Lamb of God playing, you know, just like band after band after band. It's, it's, uh, it's really cool, man. Yeah, man, it must be uh, fantastic. I always think back to the song that you guys wrote, which was uh, you know one of your big singles, was I Love the Way You Hate Me, which um, from memory was written about touring the States and being in truck stops and getting shit from rednecks. Um, how, how, how does that tour, I, I'm picking you don't quite get, get that sort of reaction when you're touring Europe. And not so far, man, but, but we've only been touring to big cities, so at some point I guess we'll go into the smaller towns and, and see how they react to us. But I mean, it's, it's cool. You know, I guess Europe is pretty similar to New Zealand in a lot of ways. And, uh, we, you know, we'd never been there, so we didn't realize it. But after touring the States, you go there, and it's amazing how many things seem familiar. So that's, that's really cool. Yeah, man, yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. So, uh, Awake of the Fire, talk us through it. I mean, you guys have been playing a lot of these songs for a long time now. Uh, how, how good is it to finally get the, the whole lot out as, as a collection? It's incredible, man. Like, it, it really is. I mean, it was an incredible, like, journey, I guess, making this record because we made the first part of it just for ourselves and just for our fans and, you know, with no input from anybody else at all, no, you know, label people, no producer telling you what to play and how to record it and, and what to write songs about. So, you know, to have that music come out and uh, We Love The Way You Hate Me did, you know, really well for us on radio, it, it gave us so much freedom to continue even you know once we were signed and that kind of thing to continue making music the way we wanted it just the three of us recording and writing it all and really you know not thinking about anything else apart from playing those songs to our fans and so to you know to have that full record out i mean we're just you know so proud of it and does it feel like not in a negative way but you can sort of close the door on that part and you and and now you now you're writing something new and you you're exploring something new as opposed to i guess for a while while you're waiting to get this album out with you know all the tours you've done and all the EPs you've released and and, and putting these songs together you, you've kind of put like the first part of your career to bed by getting this album out yeah i think so man i mean it was cool to do i mean we've been playing them these songs, as you say, for, for a while. I mean, some of them were brand new and that kind of thing. So that was really fun. So we're able to keep the creative process going with it. But, I mean, as much as putting it to bed, it's it's not really that. It's just like building on it from then on, you know, because we had such a great time. I mean, I know I've heard bands that have nightmare stories about making a record, but, I mean, we had, like, such an awesome time recording this album. And it was just a really, like, when I look back at it, it was just, like, an incredible way to spend you know a month or a couple of months that kind of thing not and then to get a an album out of it so it's cool i think now that we've got that out you know as i say we start working on the acoustic ep and we start writing you know new songs and it's cool just to carry that vibe of just basically pushing ourselves musically and doing whatever we truly believe in and speaking of uh, you know pushing yourself musically i mean you've said that you've, you've had these songs for a long time and you've been touring them for a long time uh, you know i'm I've been in a band for a while as well, and sometimes we're in the same situation where you write the first song of what's going to be on the next album, and by the time you know you've that song's put to bed, you've got the rest of the album written, and you start recording, or you you know you're playing these songs live and you're jamming it out. You kind of those songs change, and you find better ways of doing them, or better ideas for it, whether it's just a lyric or a lick or or whatever a fill or whatever it happens to be. So you know from the time that you know you first wrote these and maybe put them out on an EP or first played them live to getting them on the record, how much have those songs changed? I mean, the ones that I guess the ones that were from the EP to the to the record haven't changed that much in that sense. What we'll do is you know when we play them live, we'll come up with different intros, different outros, or extend the, the bridge sections and really draw them out there. And I think within those songs, you know, we'll, we'll push the music in that respect. Um, with the new ones, obviously, as we're writing it, we're coming up with them over and over and over again. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's really awesome. Yeah, man, it sounds great. Now, obviously, you know, you touring too. You know, you've toured you toured Europe a couple of times. Now you've been all over the states several times in North America uh, as well. Um, so I guess you're discovering new music all the time. How have your influences changed, and how do you think that's affecting the way you write or influencing the way you write? Uh, I mean, that's that's a that's a, a good point, man. I mean, I don't know. There's so much you can draw from every single band that we watch. Certainly, when we are lucky enough to get to play with bands at, at such a high level. I mean, we never really thought that we'd be 
on festivals with such massive bands or touring with such huge bands. I mean, touring with Slash, you know? I mean, that's just insane. I think for us, the main thing you really learn is is just the conviction that those massive bands have in what they're doing, you know? It's, it's really easy to... Um, it's easy, you know, when you're starting out and that kind of thing to have everybody tell you what they think they should do and to think that these people know best, industry people, anybody like that. But it's, uh, you know, when you watch these bands that are huge and have done it on their own terms and played the music that they love, I mean, that's just incredibly inspiring. Yeah, you know, I can only imagine, you know, sort of uh, what it's like, you know, sharing a tour bus or sharing a stage with some of these guys that you've you've gone on these big tours with. So, I mean, you know, how close do you get to a lot of them? And you know, are you your friends ongoing with with a lot of these guys? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. I mean, that's the cool thing is you actually see them a lot. You know, if you're on the festival circuit, then you'll see these bands every couple of weeks, and you'll hang out with them. And of course, you know, you trade you know, numbers and everything like that, and you keep in touch with all these guys, because, I mean, you're on the same journey, you know? I mean, they might be 10 years ahead of us, they might be a massive band, but they're all doing, you know, what they love, playing rock music, playing metal for a living, and, uh, I mean, like, we've been blown away by how cool these dudes are, you know? Just get to hang out with them as if they're, they're your friends from next door, you know? Yeah, man, that's awesome. That's awesome, and I mean, you got you got to have a, a best tour story for you that we we went on tour with somebody or experienced when you first met someone that just kind of blew you away. I mean, well, I don't know if it's necessarily the best, but it was insane when we um, when we opened for Slash. We came in and they were sound checking, and we were getting ready to sound check, and you know, Slash walks past, and we're like, hey, man, I'm Chris from Like a Storm. He's like, oh, I, you know, I know who you guys are, man, you know, listen to the stuff, and you guys sound awesome. I was like, man, I never I never thought I would hear those words come out of that guy's mouth. <laughs> that is outstanding, man, that is outstanding. Hey, listen, one thing that I always do when uh, whenever I interview bands is do a quick five to finish with, so I'll do this quick five with you, and uh, maybe an opportunity to, to, to drop someone in at some point. I'll leave that up to you, your discretion, though. But uh, uh, first question uh, for you was, what was the first experience or first album you listened to that made you think, this is what I want to do, and sort of what was the experience around that? Man, I mean, two, two albums spring to mind, I guess, for me. One, of course, was Nevermind by Nirvana. I mean, probably half the world has that same experience with that album. I think I just I just heard it and was just blown away by the energy of the music. You know, just I mean, the drums, the beat, just the insanity of those guitars and his vocal. You know, I mean, it's just incredible. Another one is uh, Jimi Hendrix. I think I got the ultimate experience or something, which was a, a, a greatest hits or something, you know, when I was a kid. Yeah. And I, I just couldn't believe, you know, how many layers were in that music and and the the way it could transform your entire mood, you know, your entire world could get transformed just from, you know, listening to what this guy had recorded. Yeah, no, that's awesome, bro. That's awesome. All right, well, second question is, uh, what's your poison these days? Obviously, you travelled a lot, so you, uh, you know, whenever we get together, we we always have a beer and, and and go out. I'm picking you do the same over there. You must have uh, imbibed diff- lots of different libations. What's your favourite at the moment? Uh, I think our favourite is probably Fireball. You know, it's a, it's like a cinnamon whiskey, I guess. Ooh. So that's really good. We used to be on, you know, we were on Jägermeister for, for quite a while, and then I think we pretty much did that to death and after a while we're like you know let's switch to, to something else and so we switched to fireball and that's uh that's always a good one uh, nice nice all right well uh, so what it warms is up the vocal cords which you'll appreciate as a, as a singer you know what i mean it, oh. it, 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 it's better than a warm-up I'm hearing you. I'll, I'll tell them it's it's prescribed if anybody asks no it's a prescription man dr chris told me i had to Exactly. And uh, all right. Well, uh, of all the pl- all the bands you've toured with, whether it's your own band or other bands, what's the most disgusting habit? We toured with a, a band, and the drummer was uh, ha- having a, a competition with himself to see how long he could go without showering for. Oh. And it, and it, it was two weeks at the point that we met up with them, and I was just like, I don't, I couldn't be in a band with them. You know, <laughs> I mean, just he'd come up and try and give you a hug at the end of a show, and it was just horrendous. <laughs> You're not going to name and shame? I'm not going to name and shame, 
<laughs> all right, mate, all right. And, uh, well, I think we're running out of time. So finally, um, a kid comes up you, to you today and says to you, Chris, what's metal? And you can only give him one album. What album are you going to give him? Man, that's a that's a that's an incredible question. I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, I think for me, one of the gateway records would be uh, Black Album by Metallica. Now, I don't think that would necessarily be the most metal album that anyone had, but that would be one for me to. I don't know to get someone into it the way that I got into it. Beautiful. Hey, Chris, thanks very much for your time, man. I know you've got to do a whole bunch more of these, so uh, look forward to seeing you when you get back home and, and ha- having a fireball. Dude, thank you so much.